Hey everybody, Smart Silver Stacker here. Hope you were doing well. Today we got a confirmation that the unfolding global debt crisis that we have been witness to is worsening. The Bank of England has announced an expansion of their emergency bond buying program, their quantitative easing, to the tune of 10 billion pounds per day. Now that announcement came yesterday that they were going to increase the purchases and that comes out to about $11 billion, by the way on a daily basis. That's how many bonds they're buying. But yesterday, the index-linked bond market, or the gilt market as it's known over in the UK, sold off by about 5.5%. And so today, they issued a statement that the purchases would be extended into that part of the bond market. And this is what they had to say. The beginning of this week has seen a further significant repricing of UK government debt, particularly index-linked gilts. Dysfunction in this market and the prospect of self-reinforcing fire sale dynamics pose a material risk to UK financial stability. And so what they're referencing here is a panic sell-off in the UK debt market. That move that we got yesterday, that 5.5% sell-off, is a huge move for a sovereign debt market for a country with an economy the size of the UK's. And so it shows us that the liquidity is very scant in these debt markets. There are not a lot of takers, you know, surprise, surprise, that people don't want to buy bonds that are guaranteed to lose purchasing power when the yields are significantly lower than the year over year rates of inflation. I mean, surprise, surprise. I mean, who's gonna wanna buy that except possibly a central bank? So the risk of a panic sell-off and a collapse in the debt market remains very real, although the Bank of England seems to be in some denial about this. Even though they are announcing this expansion to their QE, they also said that the size of auctions will remain under review and that all of these purchases will be unwound in a smooth and orderly fashion once risks to market functioning are judged to have subsided. So these purchases are supposed to end on October 14th, that's this Friday. I don't think the risks are going to have subsided by Friday. I don't know about you, but that seems like an awful short amount of time to end all of the systemic risk to the global debt market. These purchases are gonna continue and they're gonna increase and they're gonna continue beyond the original planned 14th of October. And then also, in this same article from CNBC, there's a line here, I'll read it to you, that on October 31st, the Bank of England plans to begin its delayed sales of gilts as part of a wider quantitative tightening effort and unwinding of pandemic-era monetary stimulus. The Monetary Policy Committee will not meet again until November 3rd after the scheduled recommencement of gilt sales. I mean, you gotta be kidding. They're talking about unwinding the pandemic-era stimulus when markets can't even survive without more stimulus. They're literally doing stimulus right now. They are buying bonds. So how they think conditions are going to improve so much between the 14th of October and the 31st of October that they can go from buying bonds in an emergency intervention to tightening and selling bonds that it's had on its balance sheet for years now is beyond me. And uh, I would be willing to bet, I mean, this might sound like a crazy forecast, but uh, I don't think that that quantitative tightening on October 31st is really going to begin. And I suspect that maybe the Monetary Policy Committee is going to end up meeting before November 3rd. What do you think? You think they might have to get together and change the date for that quantitative tightening program to begin? I don't think that that is uh, outside of the realm of possibilities. So I'll go ahead and say that. And this debt crisis, it is not limited to the UK debt market. We are going to see this move into the US in relatively short order. Today, we've got the bond market selling off again a little bit. 10-year yield up to 3.9% last time I looked. But it's not really about the yield and how high the yield gets. It's about how fast these bond markets are selling off. And if we start seeing moves in the US debt market, like yesterday's 5.5% sell-off in UK gilts, then it is not going to be long before the Fed is forced to intervene as well, just like the Bank of England is. The truth is that this debt problem, it extends beyond the world of sovereign debt. And I want to talk to you about the consumer debt report that the Fed just released last Friday. But first, I do want to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor, Silver Botanicals, household and personal hygiene products that utilize the power of nano silver. 
And I actually just picked up a bottle of this Silver Botanicals Silver Tongue Oral Care Mouthwash with True Colloidal Nano Silver and Essential Oil Formulation. And this is one of my favorite products from Silver Botanicals. I actually like to use this myself before I record videos because I find that it's a very invigorating formula. If you look at the label here, they've got peppermint, myrrh, thyme, clove, eucalyptus, all of this really great stuff in here. No alcohol, all natural essential oils, and true colloidal nano silver. So this to me is a much healthier way to manage uh, you know, the bacteria that causes bad breath and all that stuff rather than harsh alcohol-based mouthwashes. And the reason I like to use it before I film videos is because I find that blend of essential oils to be very invigorating to the vocal cords and my voice. And it helps me to speak more clearly and to you know talk without having to pause every five seconds to swallow and clear my throat and all those things. And as a customer, I can tell you that Silver Botanicals products are top-notch. They're excellent products, so check them out today over at silverbotanicals.com, link down in the description. And don't forget to use coupon code STACKER to save 10% off your order. Okay, so the consumer debt report that the Fed released last Friday, it shows that consumer debt in the U.S. has reached a new record at $4.68 trillion. And if you look at the year-over-year -year data, back in quarter three of 2021, we were at $4.35 trillion. So that is a greater than $300 billion increase in consumer debt in one year's time. And a big cause of this is inflation because wages are not keeping up with the devaluation of the currency. And so as real wages decline, consumers are being forced to rely on borrowing and credit cards to make up the difference. And obviously, this is a trend that is ultimately unsustainable. And it is just one more component of the gigantic debt bubble that we continue to see inflated around us. And at the end of the day, this is just a vicious cycle because what this means is that we are going to have to have much higher inflation in the future because there's only two ways to resolve this level of debt, okay? You can either default on the debt, the debt doesn't get paid back at all or it gets paid back in some fractional manner, or it can be paid back in devalued currency. And historically, hyperinflating away excessive levels of debt, it seems to be the choice that the powers that be consistently make. And, you know, I think that's just human nature because when there's a lot of pain either way for a decision, the decision is going to be consistently to put off the judgment day and to kick the can down the road as far as possible. But the problem is that by doing this, the inevitable day of reckoning, it might be delayed, but it's also made much worse. And the reckoning that we are in for is going to be extreme indeed. But one last thing I wanted to cover today is the cyber attacks that were launched yesterday by pro-Russian hacker group Killnet. It knocked out some U.S. airport websites. Some airlines were having problems, I believe. And this wasn't a huge problem because it was just a denial of service attack. You know, no planes were falling out of the sky. And as far as I know, nobody was hurt. It still wreaked a bit of havoc, I'm sure, and you know, it doesn't exactly instill confidence. I mean, I know I don't really want to be getting onto a plane if I know that there's an ongoing cyber attack against the airport that I'm at. And something that we really need to be aware of here as this Ukraine conflict continues to intensify, and it is intensifying. I mean, just had that attack on the Crimea Bridge, which several weeks ago, uh, Medvedev, the former president and the head of the Russian Security Council, he said that an attack on Crimea would lead to a serious escalation, and now we have seen that. And there's also been an intensified Russian counterattack with shelling on all this civilian infrastructure. So absolutely, this conflict is expanding. Don't be under any illusions that we're anywhere near a peaceful resolution. But something we need to be aware of is that Russia has a very high level of cyber warfare capability. This is something they have invested a lot of resources into, over the past several decades. They're very advanced, possibly more advanced than the U.S. I mean, they even have things like an internet kill switch where they can essentially shut off the Russian internet from the rest of the world. And as far as I know, the U.S. doesn't have anything like that, and we do not have the cyber defense capability that they have either. And Killnet, that Russian hacker group, they noted that other vulnerable U.S. sites that could succumb to similar DDoS strikes or denial-of-service attacks 
include sea terminals, logistic facilities, weather monitoring centers, healthcare systems, subway systems, and exchanges and online trading systems. So from a financial standpoint, you know, think about this. The market is crashing. There's an unfolding crisis. You go to log into your online brokerage and you find that you've been DDoSed. And now you can't get in there and place a sell order. And you are just seeing your portfolio being bled dry in a crash and you are unable to act. And that is a very real possibility, folks. At this point, we have to adopt the mindset that anything that is only a digit on a computer is extremely vulnerable. And you know, it really drives home the meaning of the old adage, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And I know it's not realistic to not have any electronic assets. You know, many of us, the majority of us, have at least some kind of stocks, a 401k, a savings account. Maybe you got some cryptocurrency on a brokerage or even an online wallet. But with the very real risk of cyber attacks intensifying and, you know, the internet possibly even going down for some prolonged period, don't take it for granted that these assets are secure. Get in the mindset that assets like this could very easily just go poof or at least be inaccessible for a prolonged period of time and you'll plan accordingly. And of course, none of this is financial advice, but no cyber attack is going to remove the value from your physical gold and silver holdings, just saying. So you might wanna get your hands on some metals, some tangible assets that are outside of the electronic financial system. And you probably want to have some cash, too, because, you know, let's say the Internet goes down or your bank gets uh, hacked or cyber attacked or DDoSed or whatever, and the ATMs aren't working and the credit cards aren't working. Well, if you go to the grocery store, there's probably going to at least be some lag time before they start accepting silver as payment. You know, you're probably going to want to have some cash, too, because... Uh, for all the metal you have, I'm not so sure that that's going to be able to buy you groceries, at least in the uh, short-term aftermath of a cyber attack like that. So make sure you've got some cash on hand, too. And I'm not saying you need to be shoving uh, tens of thousands of dollars into your mattress, but, you know, some assortment of small bills, mind you, also. Don't, you know, go grab a couple hundreds and think you're set, because if there is a situation where you need to be paying in cash, it might be hard to make change. So just from a very practical standpoint, you know, get yourself some fives, some tens, and some singles in case that's the only way to buy things. And, you know, as far as stacking precious metals and using precious metals as an inflation hedge, really makes you wonder about things like the GLD or the SLV or any kind of paper silver derivative or electronic silver derivative and, you know, how effective that is actually going to be at safeguarding your wealth. And for me, I much prefer physical metal and physical tangible bullion I can put my hands on. And this video has gone on long enough, folks. Uh, so thank you all very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Let me know what you think about all these developments. Smart Silver Stacker, out.